I'm here to talk to you today about the best loan structure when purchasing or considering purchasing an investment property. And they're, they're, it is fundamentally important because we need to think about the tax consequences with this as well. So one thing I would recommend all clients not do is something which I call stacking. Okay? And what do I mean? You have an owner-occupier loan, right, here for 200000 You buy an investment property uh, for 400000 and you just add the two loans together and you get a total debt of 600000 now the problem we've got here is how pedantic are the ATO going to be when you start trying to make claims? Because you've just combined both loans together. So how does the ATO know how much interest you're claiming? Because all your interest is going to be bundled together. Now the problem comes in the fact that technically interest is calculated daily. So as an accountant, we may need to look at your daily interest calculation, the interest that you've been charged, and try and split it up each day. Very cumbersome and very complicated. And it's quite easy for us to avoid this by having our $200,000 owner-occupied loan here, and then we've got two options. Option A is to have $400,000 and have what we call cross-collateralized with the owner-occupier. Some people don't like this because they, and let's assume that your owner-occupier is worth 400,000 in total, right? So you've got 200,000 in equity. So some people don't like this because they feel like now they've put, they've bought this investment property, their house is at risk, right? It's only at risk if you sell your investment property for less than 400,000 plus buy costs. If you don't, well then you've got nothing to worry about. So it's only going to be a risk if you sell it at a loss. So how can we mitigate this risk? What we can do is create what's called a sub-account. So we might have 20% of the 400 there, 80% here, so 320 and 80, and there's your own occupier at 200. So if you sell your investment property at any time, you, you're terminating that account, but you still have a sub-account here. So then you would be terminating that sub-account as well. However, again, it's the same principle. If you sell this investment property only for 360, so you sell it at a, a marginal loss, well, you're still going to be left with 40k sitting against your house loan anyway because of that loss. Right? But again, if you go through a whole business cycle with your investment property, which is a 10-year cycle, which generally looks like this. So right at the moment, timestamp this video, we're in corona time at the moment, at the height of corona. So our market cycle was down here. Okay, now's not a great time to be selling anyway. So we need to now go through the full 10 year cycle to ride that wave to get the best returns for our investment property anyway. So which structure here is the better one? They both work the same. It really comes down to what you are most comfortable with. But logically, you're going to get the same result either way. 